टुडे आई एम टेकिंग अप द टॉपिक लोकोमोशन एंड मूवमेंट आई एम डिस्क्राइबिंग द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ स्केल्टल मसल द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ स्पार्कोमिया कॉन्ट्रेक्टल प्रोटीन्स एंड अबाउट स्लाइडिंग फिलामेंट थियरी ऑफ मसल कॉन्ट्रेक्शन यू नो दैट द मजिल्स आर डिराइव्ड फ्रॉम द मिसोडम द मजिल्स आर थ्री टाइप्स स्केल्टल मजिल और स्ट्राइटल मजिल और स्ट्राइपिड मजिल दीज मजिल्स आर ऑलवेज अटैच टू द बोन्स एंड आर अंडर अवर वॉलेंटरी कंट्रोल द सेकेंड टाइप ऑफ मजिल इज कॉल्ड स्मूथ मजिल द स्मूथ मजिल हैज नो स्ट्राइशन और स्ट्राइप्स एंड इट इज प्रेजेंट इन द हॉलो विजल ऑर्गन्स लाइक द डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम ब्लड वेसल्स रिप्रोडक्टिव डेक्स एक्सेट्रा The third type is called cardiac muscle. It is present in the heart of all vertebrate animals, and it is a special type of muscle. Today we are going to deal with only the skeletal muscles. The muscles have the properties of excitability, contractility, extensibility, and the elasticity. So these are the properties of the muscles. the skeletal muscle is attached to the bones through tendons and a muscle a skeletal muscle is made of a number of fascicles fascicles each fascicle is made of a number of muscle fibers and covered by a connective tissue sheath known as fascia so this is about the fascicle in cross section these are the muscle fibers if you take one muscle fiber it looks like this the muscle fibers are very long and they are multi nucleated they possess hundreds of nuclei so the muscle fibers are in the form of syncytium they are actually formed by the fusion of a number of muscle cells then the <coughs> plasma membrane of a muscle fiber is known as sarcolemma the cytoplasm of a muscle fiber is known as sarcoplasm the endoplasmic reticulum of a muscle fiber is known as sarcoplasmic reticulum the sarcoplasmic reticulum is the storehouse of calcium ions calcium ions play an important role in muscle contraction and these ions are stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum so this is the muscle fiber this is the sarcolemma this is the sarcopla sarcoplasm and inside the sarcoplasm we find a number of filamentous structures these these are known as myofilaments or myofibrils so a muscle fiber has a number of parallelly arranged myofilaments or myofibrils i have drawn one myofibril here a part of a myofibril the myofibrils are very long and under a compound microscope it reveals these features on the myofibril we find alternating dark and light bands alternating dark and light bands like this the dark bands are known as a bands and the light bands are known as i bands so on the myofibril we find alternating dark and light bands a band means anisotropic band i band means isotropic bands under the compound microscope it reveals these <coughs> details in the middle of the i band this is the i band here there is a line known as z line this is the a band 
In the middle of the A band also there is another line known as M line. This is M line. The edges of the A band. This is the edge, this is the edge. Are more darker than the middle region. So the edges of the A band are more darker than the middle region. Then the lighter middle region of the A band is known as H zone. H zone. Then the part of the myofibril between two successive jet lines is known as sarcomere. So this point you have to remember very carefully. The part of the myofibril extending between two successive jet lines is known as sarcomere. <clears throat> sarcomeres are the structural and functional units of muscle contraction. Then, in a muscle fiber, we find thousands of these sarcomeres. Electron microscope reveals much more details of a sarcomere. If a sarcomere is observed in an electron microscope, it reveals all these details. <coughs> this is one jet line, this is another jet line. Then, electron microscope reveals two types of filaments, protein filaments in the <coughs> sarcomere. These filaments are known as thick filaments and thin filaments. So there are two types of filaments in the sarcomere. These are proteins made of thick filaments and thin filaments. The thick filaments are made of myosin protein, myosin. The thin filaments are made of, made of the protein actin. So in this way, in the <coughs> sarcomere there are two types of filaments. These are thick filaments made of myosin. These are thin filaments made of actin. So they are also known as myosin filaments and actin filaments. The actin filaments are always attached to the jet lines like this. These are the myosin filaments. They are present in the middle of the sarcomere and they extend across the length of the A band. That means the myosin filaments are confined only to A band. Whereas the actin filaments, they not only extend across the I band, but they also enter the H zone, sorry, A band on either side. So the thin filaments interdigitate between the myosin filaments on either side of the A band. As a result, the edges of the A band are more darker than the middle region. The middle region contains only the myosin filaments. The middle region means H zone. If you take a cross section here, you find only myosin filaments or thick filaments. If you take a section here, cross section of the I band, it reveals only yakin filaments. But if you take a section here at the edges of A band, you find both thick filaments and thin filaments. So the <coughs> reason for the darkness of the edges of A band is due to the presence of both thick filaments and thin filaments. Then <coughs> I have drawn one acne filament here. The acne filament is made of two helically coiled acne filaments and each acne filament is known as F-actin or filamentous actin. The filamentous actin is made of a number of globular proteins or G proteins. So this is one strand of F-actin, this is another strand of F-actin. The actin filaments are associated with two more proteins known as accessory proteins. These are very important. The two accessory proteins are 
ట్రూపు మయోసిన్ అండ్ ట్రూపోనిన్ ద ఇంపార్టెంట్ పాయింట్ హియర్ ఈస్ ఆన్ ద యాక్టిన్ ఫిలమెంట్స్ దేర్ ఆర్ సమ్ సైట్స్ దీస్ సైట్స్ ఆర్ నోన్ యాజ్ యాక్టివ్ సైట్స్ దీస్ ఆర్ యాక్టివ్ సైట్స్ సో దిస్ ఈజ్ వన్ యాక్టివ్ సైట్ This is another active site. This is another active site. The tropomyosin also occurs in the form of two helically coiled filaments. The tropomyosin covers all the active sites present on the active filaments. So the function of tropomyosin is to mask or to cover all the active sites present on the యాక్టిన్ ఫిలమెంట్స్ దెన్ అటాచ్ టు ది ట్రోపోమయోసిన్ దెన్ దాని దగ్గర ఫుటిన్ కాల్ ట్రోపోనిన్ ఐ హెవ్ డ్రాన్ ఏ బిగర్ పిక్చర్ హియర్ ఇఫ్ యూ టేక్ క్రాస్ సెక్షన్ హియర్ ఇట్ లుక్స్ లైక్ దిస్ దిస్ ఈజ్ జీ ప్రోటీన్ ఆఫ్ యాక్టిన్ ఫిలమెంట్ దిస్ వన్ ఇస్ ద యాక్టివ్ సైట్ ది యాక్టివ్ సైట్ ఈస్ మాస్కిల్డ్ బై ట్రోపోమయోసిన్ అటాచ్ టు ద ట్రోపోమయోసిన్ ఈజ్ ట్రోపోనిన్ ట్రోపోనిన్ ప్రోటీన్ హ్యాజ్ త్రీ కాంపోనెంట్స్ దీస్ ఆర్ నోన్ యాజ్ టిఎన్టి టిఎన్సి అండ్ టిఎన్ఐ టిఎన్టి మీన్స్ ట్రోపోనిన్ ట్రోపోమయోసిన్ దిస్ కాల్ ట్రోపోనిన్ ట్రోపోమయోసిన్ బికాస్ దిస్ ఈజ్ అటాచ్ టు ది ట్రోపోమయోసిన్ దిస్ ఈజ్ టిఎన్సి దట్ మీన్స్ ట్రోపోనిన్ కాల్షియం డ్యూరింగ్ మదిల్ కాంట్రాక్షన్ the calcium ions are attached to the tnc tni troponin inhibitor this prevents attachment of cross bridges to the active sites when the muscle is under rest so in this way these three components have three different functions then coming to the myosin filament it is made of a number of meromyosins this is made of a number of meromyosin molecules the meromyosin molecules are also helically coiled like this a meromyosin molecule has two parts it has a cross arm and a tail the cross arm is made of heavy meromyosin heavy meromyosin or hmm the tail is made of light meromyosin the cross arm has two parts a head and a short arm the head and short arm they form the cross arms during muscle contraction or cross bridges on the head there are two sides this side is known as the actin binding site so during muscle contraction this site attaches to this active site the second site is known as atp binding site this site has atp base enzyme and at the site atp molecule is attached during muscle contraction and due to the action of the atp base atp undergoes hydrolysis and the energy is released that energy is used in muscle contraction <clears throat> so that is about the structure of actin filaments and the myosin filaments then <clears throat> muscle contraction actually during muscle contraction nothing contracts except the length of the sarcomere in the olden days it was thought that muscle contraction is due to the contraction of actin and the myosin filaments but two teams of scientists namely huxley and nederkirke and huxley and hansen two different teams proposed the same theory at the same time that's why both the teams got the credit for this theory they have proposed a theory known as sliding filament theory 
This theory was proposed in the year 1954. According to this theory, during muscle contraction, the actin and myosin filaments do not shorten or contract. But actually, the thin filaments slide over the thick filaments. They slide over the thick filaments and travel towards the middle of the A-band. That's why it is known as sliding filament theory. So that is theory is now accepted all over the world. Now, <clears throat> let us see how the muscle undergoes contraction. On the surface of the muscle, there are neuromuscular junctions or <clears throat> neuronal end plates. Like this. this is a muscle, let us take this muscle. This is the neuron. Here it is motor neuron. So motor neuron terminals, axon terminals are on the surface of the muscle fiber. So here the axon terminals and the muscle fibers form or the muscle forms a neuromuscular junction. When the action potentials arrive at the neuromuscular junction, the axon terminals release acetylcholine, a neurotransmitter. The acetylcholine produces action potentials in the sarcolemma. When these action potentials spread to the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the sarcoplasmic reticulum releases calcium ions stored in it. So, with the arrival of the action potential here at the neuromuscular junction, <coughs> acetylcholine is released. Acetylcholine causes generation of action potentials in the sarcolemma, and these action potentials spread to the endoplasmic reticulum or sarcoplasmic reticulum and cause the release of calcium ions stored in the <coughs> sarcoplasmic reticulum. These released calcium ions they come and attach to the TNC. When the calcium ions come and attach to the TNC, what happens? Structural changes occur in the troponin, the protein troponin. As a result, the troponin pulls away the tropomyosin from the active site. So because of the change in the structure of the troponin, the tropomyosin is pulled away from the active sites and the active sites are exposed. Once the active sites are exposed, what happens? <clears throat> the actin binding site of the myosin filament attaches to the site. I have shown various stages of uh, cyclic activity of the cross bridge here. See, this is the first stage. This is the myosin filament. This is the head of cross arm, this is the short arm, this is the active, these are the active sites present on the actin filament. So already to the active binding site of the head of myosin filament, one ATP molecule is attached. This ATP molecule undergoes hydrolysis when these active sites are exposed. And as a result, energy is produced. By using some of the energy, the head of the this one myosin molecule attaches to the active site. Sorry, this is the first figure. So, by using some of the energy produced due to the hydrolysis of ATP, the head of the cross arm attaches to the active site. When the head is attached to the active site, what happens? The inorganic phosphate molecule is released. Then, by using the remaining energy, the head of the myosin filament carries a power stroke. It is at like this, it moves like this, power stroke. Due to the carrying of the power stroke, what happens? The active filament moves over the 
minus equal element towards the middle region of the H zone or in the A band. So in this way, due to the power stroke of this one, this active element moves like this towards the middle of A band. Once this is carried out, what happens? The ADP is released from the ATP side, ATP binding side. When the ADP is released, this ATP binding site is now vacant. Another ATP molecule comes and attaches to this ATP binding site. With the attachment of the new ATP molecule to the binding site, what happens? The cross, the head of the <coughs> cross arm releases from the active site, like this. Again, the cycle is repeated. In this way, these cycles are repeated many times during the muscle contraction. All the cross bridges are not formed at the same time. At a time, about 50% of cross bridges are formed. What is the cross bridge? When this head of the myosin filament attaches to the active site, present on the acne filament, a cross bridge is formed. So in this way, each time 50% of the cross bridges are formed. And these cross bridges are formed 50 to 100 times per second. So due to repeated <coughs> power strokes of these cross bridges, the thin filaments slide over the thick filaments and gradually move towards the middle of the A band. Now I have shown how the thin filaments move over thick filaments in these figures. <clears throat> so this is one sarcomere, this is one jet line, this is one jet line. This is A band. From here to here, this is this is sorry, this is I band, this is A band, this is the H zone, and these are dark ridges. These are the cross bridges. So in the beginning of the contraction, a sarcomere looks like this. As the power strokes are carried, what happens? The thin filaments gradually move towards the middle of the A band. So this is the second stage. Already the thin filaments have moved to the towards the middle of the A band. This is the last stage of contraction. When the muscle is completely contracted, or when the muscle contraction is over, or at the end of the muscle contraction, sarcomere looks like this. Here you notice three points. During the muscle contraction, the width of the A band is unaltered. The width of the A band is unaltered. But, or the length of the A band is unaltered. But, the length of the I band gradually narrows down and finally disappears. In the same way, the length of the H zone also gradually narrows down and finally disappears. So, at the end of the muscle contraction, the length of the A band remains unchanged. The length of the I band gradually narrows down and disappears. The length of the H zone also disappears. These changes occur during the muscle contraction. So, in this way, sliding filament theory explains how muscle contraction takes place in the case of straighted muscle. Then, the muscles are again two types. The skeletal muscles are two types. Red muscles and white muscles. The red muscles have large quantities of <coughs> Myoglobin. We know hemoglobin transports oxygen in the blood. In the muscles, there is myoglobin which stores oxygen. Because of the presence of the myoglobin, the muscle appears red in color. That's why it is known as red muscle. These red muscles undergo slow contractions. These are also known as aerobic muscles. And in the red muscle, 
mitochondria are also more numerous. Coming to the white muscle, they have less myoglobin, so they store less oxygen. They appear whitish and they contract very fast or they undergo very fast contractions. The white muscles have few mitochondria, but they have a highly developed sarcoplasmic reticulum. Highly developed sarcoplasmic reticulum. When a muscle undergoes contractions over a long time, what happens? Oxygen death is created. That means enough oxygen is not available for the muscle to generate enough ATP through <coughs> Krebs cycle. As a result, what happens? Only glycolysis takes place and lactic acid is formed. This is anaerobic respiration. So, as the muscle contraction goes on, lactic acid go on getting accumulated in the muscle. And this results in muscle fatigue. Muscle fatigue is characterized by muscle pain and cramps. So, after the muscle contraction is over, what happens? The oxygen is used to pump the lactic acid to the liver, where it is converted either into pyruvic acid or glucose or it is broken down. So, till the lactic acid is removed from the muscles, the muscle fatigue continues and muscle fatigue is due to oxygen death. So, these are the points associated with the muscle structure and muscle contraction. Thank you.